Well, I hope the title was intriguing to you. Um, if you have the righteousness of Christ, heaven and earth have passed away. And uh, I'm hoping it is a unique title, but that it hasn't scared you so much that you don't watch the, the video series. The subject of the righteousness of Christ has been an important subject for so many in such a wonderful way uh, ever since the Protestant Reformation, that is justification by faith. We've been justified or made righteous by the blood of Christ. That is how God sees us. It is not a practical righteousness. It is strictly the righteousness that we have based upon Christ's sacrifice. So what does that mean? I always love to talk with Christians about the kingdom of God. Uh, are you saved? Do you have salvation? Do you have the righteousness of Christ? Are you holy in Christ Jesus? Looking at that from a positional perspective, that is how does God see us in Christ Jesus? And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at several passages that deal with the righteousness of Christ. And it's a beautiful topic. Uh, the righteousness of Christ has given personally given me great joy and it has encouraged me in my faith it has encouraged me during the dark times, during the light times, during the down times, the up times, the times when I've fallen on my face, and the times where I'm having success in the area of, of personal godliness or moral, uh, moral behavior. So what the righteousness of Christ does when we are focused on it is it gives us confidence in Christ regardless of our performance. That is extremely important. The righteousness of Christ is what gives us confidence and courage when we have fallen during our worst times, during our darkest times. It's what restores us, not in the eyes of God because we are already perfectly restored in his sight, but restores us in our own minds, especially if we are surrounded by people who are fiercely accusing us. So we're going to go in depth on this subject of the righteousness in Christ. And my uh, assertion here is that if we have the righteousness of Christ, heaven and earth have passed away. So what do I mean by that? What am I saying when I say heaven and earth have passed away? Well, I would start off by saying uh, until heaven and earth shall pass away, Jesus says, not one jot or one tittle of the law shall by any means pass away. And I have concluded through my own studies that the heaven and earth there is speaking about the old creation. The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have become new and old things have passed away. And so what Jesus was saying, I believe, pertains to that new creation because he says, until heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle of the law shall by any means pass away. And we don't believe we're under law anymore as individuals in Christ Jesus. The church at large and as individuals, we are no longer under law. But those things have passed away. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. Because Christ was very serious when he said that, not one jot or one tittle until heaven and earth passes away. Well, Paul says, if anyone is in Christ, the old has passed away and we are a new creation. Okay, so let's go on and take a look at this. If you have the righteousness of Christ, heaven and earth have passed away. Obviously, we have the righteousness of Christ. What do we have if we are in Christ? If anyone be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. We are obviously a new creation. But specifically, what else does the Word of God teach that we have in Christ? First of all, there's no condemnation. What a joy. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It's a favorite of ours. There's no condemnation if we are in Christ. No matter what happens to us, no matter what kind of accusations are brought against us, even from our own minds, the word of God teaches there is therefore now no condemnation if you are in Christ. So what do we have in Christ? No condemnation. What do we have in Christ? Redemption. Being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption, which is what? In Christ. If you are in Christ, then the power of his cross applies to you. You have been redeemed. You have been rescued. You have been bought back. You are redeemed what? In Christ. 
Sanctification. So often people see this as some sort of a practical, uh, progressive, moral situation. But what does the word of God teach? To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified, eris tense, in Christ Jesus, in Christ, saints by calling with all who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So in Christ, we have redemption, we have sanctification, and we have righteousness. How righteous are we? Colossians chapter 1 states it explicitly. And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in your mind, engaged in evil deeds, and I believe what he's talking about there is self-righteous deeds, works in self-righteousness, which are evil, filthy rags. Yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. That's how righteous we are. Holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Now notice it says to present you before him. In another translation, it says holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his eyes. Very important. This is all about how God sees us. If God sees us as righteous as his son, as having the righteousness of Christ in Christ, we are holy and blameless in his eyes. Again, how righteous are we? For by one offering he has perfected or completed for all time those who are sanctified. Hebrews 10 verse 14. How righteous are we? Perfected for all time by the one-time sacrifice of Christ. Again, what do we have if we are in Christ? This pretty much sums it up. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. But by his doing, so we know this is a sovereign act of God. By his doing, you are in Christ Jesus. We are not in Christ Jesus because of our efforts or our decisions or our goodness or our will or our works or uh, our self-righteousness. But by his doing, you are in Christ who became to us. One translation says, who is made unto us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So it's a sort of a summary of everything we just talked about. Again, what do we have if we are in Christ, but by his doing you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness. So that's what we're gonna focus on. Right now we're gonna focus on righteousness as the word of God teaches it to be our reality. The righteousness of God is our reality. Paul said in Romans 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for in it, in what? The gospel of God, the gospel of Christ. For in it, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, that the righteous man shall live by faith. And I believe the faith to faith there is speaking about faith first for those under the old covenant, and now for those under the new covenant, the righteousness of God is revealed. It is revealed in that Christ has been revealed. He was hidden from the foundation of the world, but now is manifested or revealed for our glory, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested. It is now manifested in the person of Jesus Christ, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. In other words, they spoke of this righteousness to come, but now it is revealed, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. So this is specifically for those who believe the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So we have this righteousness. For with the heart, Romans 10.10, 10, for with the heart man believes resulting in righteousness. This is not something we have to wait for. It's not something that existed before Christ. It is something that comes through belief in Jesus Christ by the grace of God. And with the mouth he confesses resulting in salvation. Salvation and righteousness are synonymous, a new covenant reality. 
Paul says in Philippians 3, 8 and 9, more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. The literal translation is dung, dung, human excrement. In order that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but watch, but that which is through or comes from faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. And this is the faith, obviously, that is from God. Philippians 3, 8 and 9. So we are again asserting emphatically that we have the righteousness of of God. Was this righteousness predicted by the prophets? Absolutely. And we're going to look at these passages in depth in part two.